This is a Lawnmaster 36 volt battery powered lawn mower. It's one of the earlier generation of mowers which commonly used multiple lead acid batteries as a power source. These older battery powered mowers themselves are generally good. They cut grass well, are simple to use, and are reliable. The thing that lets them down is their prehistoric lead acid battery pack. They are big, heavy, take long to charge, and most importantly, don't seem to have a long lifespan. Replacement battery packs are usually too expensive to justify, and that's why it's possible to get these mowers secondhand, with a dead battery pack of course, for cheap or even free. Modern lawn mowers use lithium ion batteries, which are often compatible with other tools from the brand. They improve on all of the shortcomings of their lead acid ancestors. I'm going to modernize this lawn mower by adapting it to be powered by modern lithium ion drill batteries. And since this is my second time converting a mower, I have a few ideas for improvements, starting with the battery holder. Previously, I was reluctant to buy a ready-made one, so this time I bought a 3D printer instead. This is turning out to be one of the best tools I own, and I'm impressed by how plug and play it is. Other than initial bed leveling, I haven't really had to tinker with it. I've been able to churn out parts in a fraction of the time it takes me to machine them, and at a fraction of the cost too. I got the CAD file for the holder from a website called Thingiverse. However, I needed to modify it to get it to fit the batteries well and to accept the style of terminal I make. I used the same trick of cutting open a copper pipe and hammering it flat as a convenient source of copper for the battery contacts. This time around, I decided to connect the wires to the copper contacts using crimped spade connectors rather than ring terminals. It's a simpler and cleaner connection method, and doesn't rely on the clamping force of fasteners, which can loosen and impair proper electrical contact. This is the compartment where the original battery pack was. There's plenty of room to put two batteries and a switch. I decided to put the batteries on opposite ends because this way the side buttons were more easily accessible than if the batteries were mounted side by side. I liked having the option to operate the mower with two batteries in series or in parallel, so I did that again. I just needed to design and print a faceplate to make it look neat. 
I went a little overboard and filled the markings with black epoxy because I really like how this looks. The spot where the original battery terminal is attached makes a great place for the voltage selection switch. Here's what the battery compartment looks like with the two holders and voltage selector switch installed. Now that everything is in place, I just need to add wiring. For those who are curious, here's the wiring schematic for this project. The last thing to do is to wire the modified top section to the base of the mower and give the connectors a good pull test. At this point I thought it was done. Everything was straightforward and thanks to the 3D printer this project didn't take long at all. But that wasn't the case. There was a problem. When running in 18 volt mode the motor would switch itself off after 10 seconds. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd rather not mow a lawn in 10 second intervals, so this has to be resolved. After some poking around, I found the culprit. Unlike my first converted mower, which only had a contactor and a motor, this one had a little circuit board brain. As far as I was able to surmise, this little brain did two major things. Well, probably more than two, but here's the two that I found most interesting. Firstly, it spools up the motor slowly. This is probably to reduce the maximum spike in current when the motor first starts. You can hear the difference when the mower started with the circuit board installed and then without. Although I don't have the right tools to precisely measure the current drop profile of each scenario, I plotted a series of multimeter readings from a few test runs. My multimeter is limited to 10 amps maximum and has a slow sampling rate of about half a second, so take this graph with a big lump of salt. Although I do have an oscilloscope, I unfortunately don't have a current probe. Yet. The second thing I think the circuit board does is cut off power if the battery voltage drops below a certain value. This would protect the battery from damage caused by over discharging. In my case, the under voltage protection feature prevents the mower from working in an 18 volt mode, which I'd rather have the option to use. To get around this, I'm going to do some brain surgery, specifically remove the circuit board brain and have the battery directly connect to the motor through the contactor. I kind of wish I didn't have to because I like the soft start feature. It's kinder to the batteries.
And it finally works. I even think it turned out better than the first time around. I really would have liked to get some measurements of real world battery life. Unfortunately, I don't have the equipment for this and it really is very dependent on how long and thick the grass being cut is. After mowing my entire yard of half grass, half weeds, I only drained one 9 amp hour battery from 4 bars to 3 bars. When a friend did his lawn with this mower, he used two batteries in series and drained the 9 amp hour one to 3 bars and his second smaller 5 amp hour one to 2 bars. There is one more thing I wanted to add. Obviously, these types of mowers were not specifically designed to work with modern lithium batteries, and as such, there are a number of safety and damage protection features missing from my conversions. For example, as far as I understand, the circuitry in Dewalt and Milwaukee batteries doesn't prevent over-discharging the battery. I believe most of these functions are in the circuitry of the tool. This means that it's possible to use the mower long enough that the voltage of the battery drops to the point that it causes damage without even realizing it. Additionally, apart from a fuse I put in last minute, there should probably be some better form of overcurrent protection and battery pack temperature monitoring. The point of this project wasn't to make something perfect. It was to learn, build, keep stuff out of the landfill, be greener, and accept the risks if anything went wrong. Thanks for watching.